I mean, I can find it right here. You've got your ninth rib of the slip right here already. Okay. I'm feeling so the kind of the anatomical landmark. So we've got the xiphoid process right here, the costal arch as it curves around. The line of the nipple is usually pretty close to where the tenth rib tip is. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're looking right here where it kind of starts curving under. Um, I'll be real gentle right here because I know it's real sensitive. I like to roll back and forth and I can feel the ligament of this 10th rib. It's completely under the ninth rib right there. So the anterior superior iliac spine mm -hmm. right here is about where the 11th rib will be. And in a thin person like you, we can feel, if you can start low, feel the 12th rib. I'm feeling the tip of the 12th rib back here and the quadratus and all, you know, the back musculature right here. Mm -hmm. Does it hurt down there? Mm -hmm. Okay. I also check to see if it's hitting the iliac crest. That would be a rib tip syndrome, mm -hmm. but it's not. He's got about three centimeters in between. And then we feel up to the next rib. The 11th rib is right here. Actually right here is the tip of the 11th rib, right in line with the ASIS, okay? Mm -hmm. Go around back to around the nipple line. We can feel this next rib up and he's already starting to hurt just by touching right there. That 10th rib I can feel moves too much. It's not solid and stable up against the others. And we'll follow it around. It's hooked underneath the ninth rib, okay? I can feel it already underneath, deep to the ninth rib. Ninth rib is right here. It's also got a deformed and separated It's not tip. even necessarily pain, it's just, it, like whenever you check knee reflexes, it's kind of just like a... Yeah, well, I mean, hitting a nerve, yeah. it, so it makes sense. And these are extremely sensitive nerves, so I don't blame you for feeling pain there. <laughs> That's legit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so right there, I'm feeling the separated ninth rib tip. The eighth rib, if, you're, if your patient is thin enough, you can feel is a really robust, real starkly curved rib. It's a real strong, big piece of cartilage that is mm -hmm. rarely detached. Okay, I've had a few cases where they had 10, 9, and 8 separated, but they're in like really frail little female patients mm -hmm. that have a hypermobility disorder like Ehlers-Danlos. Actually, I am feeling a little bit of separation here. Yeah, you may very well have an eight, a slipped eighth rib. There's a gap right here. Do you have pain right here? Yeah. Okay. I think you may have three slipped ribs. I definitely feel it. Yeah. And this soup, if you're having a hard time feeling it on supine like this, mm -hmm. I, I'll have you roll to you uh, face that way going almost full lateral, but a little bit back, and bend your leg up here so that you can really make your belly squishy for me, okay? Get those abs all nice and relaxed. You can always feel it nicely right here. I'm feeling mm -hmm. the ninth rib is completely separated and it's rolling underneath, mm -hmm. and it stops right here. A lot of times you'll feel a ligament going up to the xiphoid. In him, I feel like it's completely detached, which is less common, you usually see it's like it's tethered by a rope, the ligament, right. but the rib can move around, but it's still tethered at its tip. I feel it's completely separated right here. Might still have a ligamentous attachment, but I feel a complete separation. Hmm. Back to the 10th down here. The 10th, honestly, is tricky to find because it's kind of hiding underneath the rest. On him or in general? In you, yeah. yeah. And in general, it's not usually this stark. You have a, you have a very explicit case of this, okay? You're, you're not hard to figure out. 10, 9, the verdict is, uh, the jury's still out on 8. It might be loose, I'm not 100% sure, right. okay? Yeah. Not really hypermobile, but it might have sort of a little break in the connection point with cartilage there, so that would be something we'd have to assess during right. surgery to figure that one out. Right. I don't even think an ultrasound would show that. So I don't need an ultrasound. I mean, sure. It's it's that easy. Okay. A couple other things that you'll find. Let me do that. Have you back on your side. Sorry. If you fall, you find the worst point of pain, and not everybody hurts in the front. Sometimes they hurt underneath the tip of the shoulder blade. Mm -hmm. Sometimes somewhere along the way. But keep in mind the interfalcial nerve starts here, and it runs underneath the rib that's above the slipped rib, and that slipped rib is banging around on that nerve all day long. Right. It can irritate it anywhere along this entire course. That explains why I have so much shoulder pain. Shoulder pain right up in here, probably, right? Yeah, always yeah. on the, um, the, the trapezius. The 10th yeah. rib, the 10th nerve, the 10th rib runs almost directly under the tip 
in yeah, that's exactly capital. where I'm having all the... Do you feel like there's a sphere going through between here to here? Does it I guess it? that's kind of, yeah, it's where the pain usually follows. That's what a lot of people describe. It feels like someone stabbed them, and it's gone all the way through, pierced them all the way through. Mm -hmm. Those are the two most common sites to hurt, but I've seen them anywhere along here. Sometimes people's only symptom is up around here, up to the xiphoid, and that's because that nerve is getting irritated here and everything forward of it is being in pain, you know? Mm -hmm. But if you understand the course of that nerve, it makes total sense. Right. And then these, these nerves also can turn on all these back muscles, so the trapezius, the latissimus, all the paraspinous muscles, all these things can get turned on and spasmed. A lot of times if people have it worse on one side, you'll feel really you know, tight my, for the last muscles. I mean, since at least I left for college, the entire right side of my body has always like... Always spasmed. Yeah. Yeah, that's very good. And I was wondering why I was always having back pain, and then one day I just felt the lower parts of like the left and right side of my back, and one side was like rock hard, and the other side was like, and when I do yoga too, and I go in like warrior's pose, uh -huh. and I stretch out this right side, it's like always, always tight. always a tight stretch, and on the left side it's nothing. Yeah. Like, I can never get a stretch at all. Right. So yeah, that makes that's, sense. It's been that way for years. Really? Know, so. Let's flip you over and see what this side looks like. I want to come around here. Yeah, I think it's mm -hmm. easier to examine from behind. Sure. I do the same thing where you kind of uh, bend this leg. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you're definitely slipped. Oh my gosh, you're worse over here. <laughs> yeah, the tenth rib is this one right here. I feel the tip of it. It's completely curved under. See, you've got flared ribs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see that a lot. And I think the flared ribs gives you a scenario where the other false ribs are having a hard time hanging on. The stresses mm -hmm. are too high because those, those false ribs are so dynamic, they're always moving. Mm -hmm. That if they're trying to hang on to something that's further out, I think that they fall off easier. That so makes sense. It's a very common scenario to have a, a flared rib and a slipped rib underneath it. So I think you're like eighth and seventh and eighth are pretty badly flared. But this side has no symptoms? Is that what you're saying? It has pain. Right here. Uh, it doesn't feel the same way as my right side, but there's times whenever I'll I'll breathe in and I'll that, that I feel yeah. Well, they tell it's you, more sensitive at well, the very least. One of the observations I've noticed more recently is that people that have a less obvious separation right here, like just a very subtle separation, tend to have more pain. Hmm. So it makes sense. You have a wider yeah. separation here, less over here, and your pain is worse on the tighter side. I think the reason yeah. is if your rib is able to move away from the nerve more commonly, it's not going to irritate it badly. Yeah. If it's loose but still close, it's always going to be beaten on that nerve. That's why your right side's worse. Yeah, no, there's sometimes when I'll breathe in and there'll be a sharp pain like near where you're touching right now. And I that's all I, I that's why I always think it's like my lungs or something, but I can always breathe in fully, so I'm like it can't be well, keep in mind, where's your diaphragm attached? It's yeah. right here uh -huh. on the inside. So your abdominal muscles are hooking to it, your back muscles are hooking to it, your intercostal muscles and, you know, the little pecs and everything are pretty close to it. Your diaphragm hooks to it on the inside. You can see why these things hurt so bad and why they have so many things that get affected mm -hmm. because everything's attached to these false ribs. Yeah. Okay, so I'm following the 10th rib. It's called actually the ninth intercostal space. Yeah, you get, it's not subtle. Um, see how your ribs are very vertical? A lot of people's are more horizontal. So this is why it's so darn confusing. The 10th rib down here, why would it correlate to a spot in your upper back, right? right. But that's because that's where it is. That's, just that's why it throws everybody off. So your pain would be probably somewhere around here if it was... Yeah, it's on both sides of my shoulder. Hmm. Yeah, you get a legit case of this. Yeah, well I notice whenever I sit up. Uh, whenever I like, when I'm stretching, I do this one thing. Mm -hmm. It always hurts. Always. Like, it feels like my, I just, it's always tight. Like, it's just always really exhausting to try to do a stretch because it feels like it's always about to like pop. Like, a really good, like, oh yeah. Like, but a good pop. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, but it just doesn't. It's just like, because everything's holding it in too tight. Your spine yeah. doesn't even all locked up. It always feels like it's just locked down at the very corners of my trapezius here mm -hmm. so I mean I guess that makes sense hmm. yeah you make total sense to me I mean you got you got a pretty significant case well it's good that someone finally makes makes sense of this <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, but 
this slip rib straight up to the one above it. So you got you to have a stable rib to hook everything to. Mm -hmm. So on the right side, it's either going to be seven or eight. It's going to be your stable one that we kind of daisy chain everything to. It used to go straight all the way around the rib above the slip rib, but I found that it kind of brings the rib up and compresses the nerve. Mm -hmm. And so I started bringing it up like this, just a little bit, okay? And what you see, if I show you that, the nerve groove for the intercostal nerve is right here. So if we bring the rib up a little bit staggered, mm -hmm. it never touches that nerve. And so you never have nerve compression. So since I made that change about four months ago, it's been it's been pretty stark difference in the outcome. People were doing really well with this, mm -hmm. but there were some that just didn't do awesome. Yeah. And so I, I brought them back and revised some of them. And I learned that in the first or second revision I did, it kind of had a spark of uh, just uh, inspiration or whatever to change this. Mm -hmm. And so I just changed the way I put the stitch in, go through this rib instead of around it, and that brings it up. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, eight, nine on you are going to be loose, maybe eight, excuse me, nine, ten are going to be loose, maybe eight. So you'd get one or two sutures in either, each of the ribs to hold them all together. I try to be a minimalist though. Mm -hmm. I think more sutures equals more nerve compression. So if you don't need it for stability, I'll just do as few sutures as possible. Okay. You can do it all through kind of about this big, mm -hmm. right over the, like the lower part of your ribs. They're kind of centered over the whole problem. Crazy. Glad living in the 21st century. This, I mean, this is like, this is old school. This is about as simple as it gets. Mm -hmm. But the problem is you gotta put the stitches in exactly where they need to be. And if you don't do that. Yeah. Well, it might be old school, but it's new school learning about the slipping ribs. So it's like. But I mean, this is only learned by doing it 160 times. I'm not a yeah. genius, but I've seen it. I mean, I've seen about 200 something cases of slip rib, which is, I mean, most people, my partner said they've seen one or two in their career. I don't believe that. I think they've mm -hmm. seen them all the time. They're just not noticing them. Mm -hmm. So I think it's everywhere. There's a yeah. lot of people with mm -hmm. this that don't know they have it because no one's helped them figure it out. Yeah. But just doing these repairs, you know, you learn better every time. I try to spend a lot of time with each each person that I'm doing this on. I really want to make it perfect for you. Yeah. I can't tell you that it's going to be zero pain afterward, but it's going to be a lot better than it is. Yeah.